May 25th. Hey everybody, today is May 25th, and as you can hear, we have the cicadas are here in Chicago, Illinois. We're here in Downer Grove. This is called Gelwick's Park. G-E-L-W-I-C-K-S, Gelwick's Park. Could you find a more difficult to say name for a park? I'm not sure if one could. So we're going to... We're going to take you quickly through uh, our little setup here for making music remote. This is my wife's GT1B. We got that used. Pretty much everything here is used secondhand, homemade, or from the resale store. So this runs off of a power bank from a phone. And there's a little USB here that takes 5 volts out of the power bank and converts it to nine because guitar electronics is always nine volts. So we have one of our speakers. These two PA speakers are 10 inch drivers with um, I think one inch or two inch compression horn drivers or tweeters. And they're good speakers, although they were cheap. They were $115 to have those shipped to us and that's kind of expensive. So uh, coming over here, this is the latest thing I built this. I actually, I was working on this this morning and it still needs some adjusting. But we built that. It, it was originally, it had three large dials on it and it was a, a device for, it was a decade box. And now it has a Dallas Arbiter Range Master circuit in here. It has a Demeter mid control or fat, fat control, I think is what it's called in here. And then this is an EP boost. This has a bright switch and a bass boost. So it's basically, you turn your power on here, there's an in and an out, and there's a safety. You can't turn the power on here unless you have something plugged into it. So if it gets turned on while it's in storage, because there's a battery pack in here, a 12 volt internal battery pack that has a circuit to drop it down to nine. That way, it's always running at 9 volts. It's not like the batteries are going to drain and it's going to sound a little different at the end of the night than it did at the beginning because of using up some electricity. So the idea behind this is to boost my guitar signal to give it clarity and presence. And it's like this is a treble boost, then there's a mid boost, and then there's a bass boost. So you might be running two of those at once. You might be running all three, but that's kind of pushing it. And that's the problem that it has right now. It's too powerful. It was starting to distort a little bit, so I've got to... I need... The, the transistor that I put in here was a... a data sheet that it says it's a 500 to 750 HFE. And it's a low noise transistor because the range master is a noisy circuit. And like I did goose the capacitor in it. It's supposed to have a 0.5 and there's like a... 500 in it basically it's a 470 and that that just means with the 5 in it it's cutting all of your signal except the treble with the 500 in it it's leaving all your meds and some of the bass but that's the thing the range master it's a great circuit but it can be a little bit too much so there's this act of tuning it and you do that with the capacitor and also with the transistor and we futzed with the capacitor and I, the more modern transistors, they don't sell them with 100 HFE. They're all like 300, 500, 800. So I've got some on order. Um, and I can go through my collection and eventually we'll get, we'll get that working right. Because I'm becoming an expert on that range master. I built quite a few... Uh, range masters and similar circuits. Here we have a Callan Bread Naga Viper, which this is a silicon transistor. It's a 2M2222 and it's got a tone control as well as a capacitor sweep. There's just two lithium ion batteries powering it. And then this boot, this is the pedal that brings up the bass that this kills. So this kills all the mids and lows and this brings some of it back. But at the end of the day, the guitar signal is nice and boosted. And these two circuits run in the 
effects loop in the middle of all the circuits that are virtual circuits in here, including the amplifier and the cabinet simulator. So this is a wireless, this is a battery pack that you would use um, for like, uh, your, uh, if you had a child that had a little DVD player in the car, it puts out nine volts still, so that runs that. The new XMG30, it sucks about a half an amp. Actually, I think it's you could, 400 milliamp is actually what it takes. So at the end of the day, if we play until it gets like kind of darkish, that battery will be dead. It's going to suck that whole huge battery dry. But it's doing a lot. There's That's really the core of the sound. These boosts are... I could kind of actually not even use those uh, and just go with what's built into the device, but I started putting some boosts in the effects loop, and man, these boosts that I'm building, they sound better than the ones that come in the digital model. So this amp here, this is only my guitar signal, That's a, this is this 8 inch ceiling speaker, and this is another contraption we built. Um, it's got these battery packs in here. So this is 24 volts here and 24 volts here. They're doubled up for extra capacity. There's the amplifier board. It's, it's 100 watts, 50 watt by 2, which is seven, TDA 7498 amp board. And are we on here? Yeah, we're on when I, when I tipped it over, the switch comes on. Here's the equalizer. We just put this EQ in and here's the speaker. It's a weird speaker. It's got two connectors here and two connectors here for on the woofer. And then there's two of everything because there's a pair of tweeters in here. But um, this it's rated at, I think it's 150 watts. Not peak watts either. It's, it's a 150 watt speaker. This is a expensive. It's like a $250 speaker retail. And we paid $5 at Goodwill. It was in the box. And I, this is a silver service box. So this, the idea for this is I can put it right near me and crank up my guitar, and that way I can have extra loud guitar. It's not getting, in, it's not blasting my wife's hair back, and it's not getting into the mix because we record. Here's our little mixing board. The audio comes out of the mixer and goes into this M Audio 2496. So this is a really high recording rate. Uh, the battery was dead. We got this on an online auction for 10 bucks. I ordered this battery and it was a little too big to fit inside of it. So I just ran the wires up through the case and Velcroed it down. And then here's a backup. When this battery drains, we can plug the USB charging in. And uh, does this have to be turned over? And then I hit this switch and. Oh, yeah, now it's coming on. Here's a little, uh, it busts this down to perfect 5 volts for the, uh, for the audio recorder. So here is our, I'm going to shut this off. Here's the business end of it. These two batteries power this preamp. I added that preamp. Here's the main amp board. These batteries here power the uh, the mixer, and then there's an MP3. So the power amp is back here. These two batteries here are significant batteries. Those are 12 volt 7 mAh. So that's 24 volts coming in to power these big PA speakers and these subs. So. On the back of this box, which this was a Hannah Montana, this was like silver, but it had like purple on the inside. I painted it black. We got this plastic box. I thought that'd be really easy to drill all the holes in it. I didn't, or I didn't concern myself with shielding because I used all shielded cable for all the audio pack on the inside of it. So there's a lot of people will say, you can't use wood or plastic for chassis. Well, you, you can't. But I can't. So on the back of this, there's three jacks, a right and a left, and those go to the satellites, and there's one on the bottom, and that goes to the sub. These are two 8-inch home subwoofers that we got at Goodwill. They were just, the wire was just cut on the back of them. The one had a, um, 
base reflex port, that thing that looks like a black hole down there, the other didn't. So I installed the port, there's a long port inside of this that, it's, a, it's an inch and a half inch PVC that runs the length of it, and then it 90s and comes up to the top. So there's a real long tube in there to, to voice it. <laughs> you believe that? And then uh, they had, they had subwoofer speakers in them. With those subwoofers, that's for like when you watch, when you watch Jurassic Park, the only time you hear the subwoofer is when the dinosaur is coming and they show the glass of water. It's like there's bass, then there's sub bass. You get it? It's below the bass. And my wife, her, the instrument that my wife plays, she doesn't play a sub bass. She plays a bass. So we took those sub bass speakers out and I looked on Google, eight inch bass guitar speaker. I'm like, do they even make an eight? And this company was blowing out these Eminence brand 8-inch bass speakers that had shock and hefty magnets, these giant magnets on them. And I'm like, those look like really good, like they were $120 marked down to $29 with free shipping. So I ordered one. Last year we played here with just one of these. And I was like, you know what? That was fine. It was enough bass. And then we went to the Goodwill, and there was another. Uh, I bought it. So we have we have two eights now, which we can we can do this with these two eights instead of our giant two ten, which is really big. It's like dragging a washing machine around or a dishwasher. It's it's a better sub and it's louder, but we don't really don't need it for in here. So this is our small rig. Um, there is a foot switch that gives me play and pause. The backing tracks are on this memory card here. There's a little memory card here. And there's a backup card there, a TF card. And this is a little MP3 player here in the front. And this board, they only give you three amps on four of the channels. So I put a, a TLO72 3 amp in here and uh it was a counterfeit ship in there so i had to replace the anytime you buy anything from ebay china and you look at the chip it'll have the part number on it but it, <laughs> it it's not trust me that's that's not what it is so ideally stuff like that is what keeps me up at night I, I, I was up thinking about this cable that was going to come out of here, eighth inch, and come around and go into here, uh, double uh, quarter inch, 6.35 millimeter in there. I was just, I had this, it's a braided cable, and it, like it matches this braiding here, or like my wife has a red braided cable. It matches that, and I bought this cable, it was like 10 bucks, it's a lot of money to spend on a cable and like it came and everything, it was in a nice package and like I was just tripping about this cable, I kept thinking about plugging it in, it's got a 90 on it, both of the ends are 90s and I was all like it's way longer than it needs to be and we got here and that's the one thing I left at home. Now mind you, I bring extra stuff, so we were able to make do with this cloth cable that busts out into this horrible neon orange thing and it's working it's working so that's our setup i've got um i've got a wireless for my guitar my wife got me this wireless for christmas last year this is my goodwill stratocaster um it's got a brass block brass saddles uh, this is not a gold foil pickup. I'm using this Gemini. This is just a cheap wireless. We painted the headstock and got a fender sticker from eBay. These are locking tuners. We got Mr. Squirmels here. And then this fender stretchy strap. So this guitar, I use a lot of uh, this position here, not all the way up, but one down. So these two pickups combined, it's either on there or on there on this. And so, I mean, sometimes you need a humbucker, you know. And I, I, I'm really, I, 
I love single coil, but sometimes you need a humbucker. And there's that thing where they can do, oh, you can do the coil split. Yeah, can you? Because to me, it, it, it's like 30% of what you get with just a regular old single coil in the bridge of a strap. So this guitar is the latest thing that we bought. It's an Ibanez micro bass. You see how close the strings are together here? So um, my wife has been filming this. My wife, this bass is like in scale for her, for her body shape and tallness. Regular basses are kind of big and uh, I kept saying I want to get you a micro because I had bought her this blue headless Chinese bass and had, I had to do all this work to get it set up right. And it's not a bad guitar. It really isn't. It really isn't. It's just that it, the neck kind of got wide as it went down and I just it just it hurt my fingers when I played it. Like I kept trying different strings. Finally we got some like $35 ground wound, power wound set of strings on there and those were really good. And right after that we found this micro and uh, it was a hundred and twenty I think the guy charged us for it. All of the used micros are 200, 175, you know they sell for 200 new. So uh, this was the color that I really wanted and we went out there the guy was kind of a middle-aged geeky foreign guy of undeterminate like just like I talk like this, you know, like, I, what, what are you? And uh, I'm thinking, you know what? I bet you there's nothing wrong with this guitar. So we bought it. I said, is the truss rod frozen? We pulled the truss rod cover off. I looked in it. I put a Q-tip in it. There was no part shavings in it. And then I I lost the, I left the truss rod cover in the parking lot. So I had to replace that. But, um... We came back and like my wife kept saying, we don't need another guitar. We got enough guitars in this house because our house is like, it's full of equipment. And um, the first day we played, the night that we played using this Ibanez, she just sounded phenomenal. Like her, it was defined. There was, she had just more control. And, and uh, I noticed this, significant improvement so that's about it for our wrap up we've got extra battery packs galore here um, we're going to be doing 16 songs most of these are new we're going to be doing I believe it's just one cover one song co-written actually he he wrote 90 percent of it i tagged on a little uh bridge thing but uh, written by steve steppy the bass player from rights of the accused chicago punk band uh that song is called plum blossom special we're going to be doing rocking chair we're going to be doing, what's another tune? Oh, uh, SPF 45. These are all classic, classic D.D. Defender songs off of my albums that I've recorded. And then there's, count them, the rest of them are all new, brand new originals. So I hope that you'll come back and check out some of the music. Uh, I just don't like how we're in the shade. <laughs> But it's beautiful today. So thank you for joining me for this walkthrough. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the uh, in the comments. The amplifier is a TPA 3116 2.1. So it's 50 by 2 and 100 for the, for the satellite. We have another, a 5425 or something, and that's a 600 watt. It's 300 watt for the sub and 150 per channel on the satellite. We use that amp, and that, that uses a bigger battery. That's got an e-bike battery that's like 36 or 48 volts. And that's really a lot of power for what we're doing.
So that's about it. We're going to have some lunch. We got some chicken salad and some chips. And then we're going to wash our hands and get down to business. I will talk to you guys later. Hug your pets and peace.